there is one more thing that I want to show you guys in future that this company is making. It is just through this door and it will be in a future video. It is like nothing I have ever seen before. The Tiny V10 I showed you guys in the previous video was special, but wait until you get a load of this. I hinted towards it in a previous video, but this is what we're really here for. This is an X20 engine. So what does that mean? Well, it's two V10s horizontally opposed and geared together. This is the two liter 22.5 degree V10 that is in the Connaught from our previous video. So it's two of them with a gearing system in between to make them together. And then it's sent through this six speed manual gearbox. This is actually the six speed manual from the Lamborghini Gallardo to deal with the amount of power that this thing's going to create. So there's two crankshafts that are then mated together through a geared system, but the numbers on this thing are pretty crazy. So 20 cylinders, that means 20 exhausts, uh, two valves per cylinder, so a 40 valve engine. And they're saying it will create around 400 brake horsepower, maybe 440 if they push it, but that's just naturally aspirated. They might turbocharge it, twin turbo it, they might supercharge it like the Connell engine can be, and then who knows what power that will produce. I've never seen anything like this. I think the closest thing I've seen is maybe the Lotus BRM H16 engine, and that had issues, especially when it came to torsional vibrations. When you make two engines like this and try and get them to work together, they can often work against each other. So I'm really interested to see what BDI and Villiers are doing to make this engine work today, to get past those issues that the H16 had. But what a thing, it is massive. But they're saying this is gonna fit in a supercar. I'm not sure exactly what, but what a thing. And what will this thing sound like? Will it sound like a V10 or will it have its completely own unique sound? Who knows? As you can see, it's not quite in working condition yet. There's still a lot of work to do, but maybe in the coming years, we'll come back here and have this thing on the dyno. After the X20, I wanted to take you guys through all of the engines that this company produces. So BDI, the overarching engineering company, owns Villiers, and all of the engines are under that company name. So Villiers V10, Villiers X20. These are their two staple engines, and you guys might recognize this one from our previous video with the Connaught. This is the two liter V10 that can either be naturally aspirated or supercharged. This is a cut down version of the V10 to form a V6. If you want to get technical, they're technically VR engines because they've only got one cylinder head, narrow angle, both 22.5. So each cylinder is 200 cc's, so this is two liters, and this is 1200. And this is small enough to not just fit in cars, but also bikes and three wheelers, which is another project that BDI are working on. So two very versatile engines. And I've been told that the V10 is pretty modular, so it could be a V6, V4, V8, who knows, even extend it to a V12. So it's two of these engines here, that make up the X20. And this isn't just it. These are pretty cool. I would love to have one of these in a car of mine, but they've also got some other stuff going on. This is another bespoke engine from the guys at Villiers. This is a fairly beefy 1200cc two-stroke engine. Now I did a video about two-stroke with regards to Formula One during lockdown about five or six months ago. And there's loads of issues with old school two-strokes that means they aren't really relevant to today, emissions and efficiency being the main two. But apparently they fixed it with this bespoke unit. This is currently running on the carburetors, old school two stroke, but the guys here have engineered a fuel injection system, which should make it much more efficient and much more relevant to 2020. Another thing is it apparently runs on synthetic oil. I'm not too clued up on exactly what that does to the engine, but apparently that makes it much better with the stuff coming out of here because a two stroke can be very smoky, very smelly and not great for the environment. But apparently the guys have made this work to put in three wheelers and to put in motorbikes. But before I talk any more about these engines, let's get the CEO of BDI 
Phil Bevan in to chat about these engines and what the plans are. These guys aren't just building these engines to then ship off to people, they're actually building vehicles as well. So let's hear what the plans are. Phil here is the CEO of BDI. Phil, what is BDI all about? A one-off prototypes, really. We come up with an idea and we just make it. And with our history, I go back you know, 58 years working on these things, just an idea and we see if it works. We can't see it right until we see it wrong. If we like it, we go into production. If we don't like it, we scrap it and do something else. So I've just gone over all of these different engines you have. and I'd like to get your thoughts on them, especially the V10. So this came directly from Connor back in 2004. And you guys, uh, do you guys own the rights now? Yes, we do. Okay. Yes. So there's this, there's the V6. Are you planning on V4s, V8s, V12s? Uh, not today, but definitely. V4s, V5s, because Volkswagen did a V5. We can do a V12. And of course, the big gap is the X20, which is really an exciting project because nobody has ever made an X20 engine. OK, we'll get onto that later. <laughs> the V10 itself, there's so few V10s now in production. I think Audi, Lamborghini are the final people mm. that have a proper production V10. What makes you guys different that you're now plunging into this in 2020? I think the main thing is all the Audi and Lamborghini V10 engines do 18 to 20 miles to the gallon. This is a two litre V10 engine, so you get the sound of the V10, you get the construction of the V10. We're looking at 40 miles to the gallon, so it can be an everyday user car whilst getting good emissions and good performance and yet economical. Well, this is BDI. We make something that we like and then we show one to the public. And if the public like it and they want to place orders, then we go into production. Okay. If we show something to the public and they don't like it, thank goodness we only made one. Sure. We don't want to set up the same. We're going to make 2000 cars and there's only two people who want to buy them. So we're completely the opposite way, like all our business. If people like it, we have a business. If they don't like it, we haven't got a business. So that's why we got 18 projects and we only need one or two to be successful. The others can be written off, but we have fun making them which is why I get out of bed in the morning. Around the corner, we've got the X20. What is the plan with that? We filmed with the H16 uh, Lotus BRM engine and they suffered a whole load of problems with their engine. So what's going to be different about the X20 to that? Well, we don't need to learn their lessons because we took their lessons and we made sure we don't suffer the same problem. Sure. It's an X20. Nobody's ever made an X20, which is the reason why we want to do it. Secondly, 20 cylinders is a nice even number. And supercars, there's only a four litre engine with 20 cylinders. So fuel economy will be there, emissions will be there. And it's just because we can do it. Uh, we want to be in the, the history books of having done it. Like the BRM H engine, 16 engine. If they didn't do it, we wouldn't be talking about it today. That's our future, we've done it and we hope to have, be successful with it. We don't want to make thousands of cars. If there's 20 people a year want to buy one, we'd be really pleased in that kind of marketplace. Okay, and you guys don't just make prototype engines, you make prototype vehicles as well. <laughs> These things under the blankets behind <laughs> us are supercars. Absolutely. So what is the plan with the X20 in terms of putting it on the road? Well, that's a Connaught car first. That would be the Connaught supercar with the X20 in it. So Connaught is going from the Syracuse you've seen to yep. a modified Syracuse to the Speedster, which is the, the the new one that we're doing, and then the supercars. I absolutely love this engine. I cannot wait to see the X20 finished, and I wish you all the luck in the world to get these things on the road and people buying them. Well, thank you for your enthusiasm, and thanks for turning up in a little place in Norfolk, because we don't let anybody know what we do, but you do now. See what we do for you guys? We get you exclusives like this. <laughs> Just before we packed up for the day, Phil couldn't resist firing up the two-stroke engine to see what we thought. Imagine having one of these things nestled between your legs on a bike or out the front of a three-wheeler. That tiny V10 and this monster of an X20 expect big things from the Connaught brand in the coming years and I cannot wait for this thing to be out on the road. I've been Mike and don't forget to subscribe to Drive Tribe. Thank <laughs> you.